man may not be on the top of his form, but he can still make himself useful. Hey, what's up to everybody out there? Uh, what's up to all the Moza users who just got F1 2022? Um, I know that some of you, like me, were confused on how to set up your uh, GS or CS wheel. And the settings basically are all the same for any wheel, the GS, the CS, or the RS wheel. Um, I'm using the Moza GS wheel here, so we'll just go through a bit of the setup real quick. It's actually a really easy setup. Um, far easier than F122, like uh, F1 2021, like I said in my previous video. Um, so I was appreciative that it didn't take me a ton of time to set it up. So let's go through and walk through the quick setup. Um, as you can see, when you first load it up, it's going to say press any button. Now, I have actually mapped my wheel to this. So this is my OK button. But again, if on your keyboard, you're going to use it for the first time. You're going to hit enter. It's going to always default and say no preset control scheme for devices, which is box one generic USB or my VJoy. Um, I do have a setup already. Again, if I hit OK on my wheel, as you see, this is my OK button. It'll communicate. Now, when it first pops up, it's probably easier to just do it here. Now, for instance, I can navigate because, of course, I've already set up everything that I need to do. But I'm going to walk through this as if I've never done it before. For those of you who may have had some issues setting it up, getting the force feedback to work, which I actually did have. And again, getting all the keys set up. So first, uh, you're going to use your mouse and keyboard and pretty much is mainly your keyboard that you use in this game. Not much mouse input, if any at all. Um, so you're just going to hit your down arrow. And the easy thing to do is as you hit your down arrow, just assign each and every key. So I'm not going to go ahead and assign accelerate or brake just because, again, I have those assigned to my pedals. But one thing I will tell you, so for instance, when you set up your wheel, if you set up steer right first, hit enter, turn the wheel, it's going to default to X plus. If you set up steer right first, it'll flop it around. So set up steer right first. This way, when you turn the wheel right, it'll go right. I kept setting up steer left first because I kept just going down from top to bottom. And when I would turn the wheel left, as I'll show you, if I hit enter and I turn left and turn back, it's going to put that negative symbol there. And again, when I first set it up, every time I set it up, it would not do steer right. So I would turn it right, come back to center. Now this time it looks like it may be working. It may have been an update by Moza or F1 itself, I think probably by Moza. But again, every time I would go stair left, it would put that plus symbol. So let's go ahead and see if I turn left, what it'll do. Go down to stair right, turn right, back to center, and now stair right. Now again, when I first initially set up, I would turn right and it would go left and vice versa. So it looks like there may have been an update, um, which again, if that's the case, awesome. I'm glad that it did. Next, hit enter, set up your pause button, your OK button. Again, I'm just going to set up a button because I'm not going to keep this setting. So I'm going to hit enter, set up pause, and I'm going to go down to gear up, shift up, going to go to gear down, shift down, pull my clutch, I've mapped these obviously to the back. Don't have a handbrake. For next camera, I map mine here. For look forward on track only, up, back, left, right, and so forth. So you would go all the way down, map all of your keys. Now, when it comes down to menu controls, because these are actually when you're on track. This is when you're racing. These are the buttons you're gonna use, your DRS, your pit limiter. And again, for some of these, I just use the pit limiter for the pit limiter. For the MFD button, I actually use box because it makes more sense to use box to use for my MFD so that I can control that multifunctional display. So I can scroll through any settings that I need to change. And obviously, if this is what I have to look on track, then I have my MFD set up for 
my joystick here. Now, you can obviously flop them if you wanted to put that here because you're using box here and you want to navigate here. Again, that is an option that you most assuredly have. Now, when it comes to setting up your menu controls, same thing. How you navigate, again, for me, as you can see, my navigate's on my left. Now, I will say this, for extra action, you will want to map that button because that's going to be some of the buttons you're going to use in the game. I map mine to the push button here. So I'm going to hit OK. But I map mine here because that's my back button. OK. You have your triggers, your right and left bumper. Your right and left bumper would actually take you through. And most times I just map those to my shifter so that when I'm in the main menu, I navigate left and right by clicking there. And again, this will take me up and down, but it's mainly those tabs at the top of the screen that have your, your, your season set up and your race and all of those different things, whether you're gonna do co-op mode, whether you're gonna do a career, whether you're gonna do solo, that's what I use these for to get around the screen. So we're gonna keep going down. Again, you got your right stick, up, down, left, right. Right stick, up, down, left, right, made sense here. Menu up, menu down, menu left, menu right, again. Because you only have these two, you can map those to individual buttons. But again, some of these, I'll be honest, don't really serve much of a function when you're in the menu. Mainly, I just want to be able to get around the menu, I'm going to be able to set up my steering, set up my uh, inputs, and get around the system. So again, map those to any button that you'd like. Again, MFD car setups. Make sure, again, you have all of these rotary encoders. So again, fuel mix, that's your map. I go ahead, hit enter, map it up for increase, go down, hit enter, map it down for decrease. Same thing, brake bias, on my control, I hit enter, brake bias, up, scroll down, okay, brake bias down. So increase and decrease. Again, because you have all of these options that some wills don't give you, some do, I like the fact that I could literally change everything on here. I literally have a differential. You don't use ABS, so nothing there. Don't use traction control. Um, the game has a traction control mode if you wanna set it up, depending on how realistic you want the game. Now, I don't use any traction control. I don't use any assist whatsoever because I wanna race with no assist as if I was racing in a real F1 car. But again, if I'm setting up ERS and I'm doing it on my keyboard, hit enter, ERS up, scroll down, hit enter, ERS down. And again, you have these UDP action buttons. I do not use them myself. Um, I know some people who do. I do not use them. I do not have a use, a use for them. Not sure if it's gonna make me faster or slower, but again, I map these things again on my wheel differential up on the wheel differential down and obviously I've already set this up so that's why I can navigate once again through the panel here so again you have your ABS and traction control in turbo so to be honest you can use those if you want to mix with the car damage panel the car temperature panel like you can map things to those um, I don't have a use for them, so I left them unassigned on mine. And again, make sure when you're mapping all of this and you're navigating, set up your navigate up, down, left, right. Set up your menu. And again, you can set up your right stick up, down, left, right. Um, looking at my settings, let's go back. And I'm gonna hit discard changes because I do not wanna change it. Once you get it all set up, I'm going to show you exactly what happens. So you get those things set up in your settings. I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to click controls and feedback. And then you save it. So I'm going to click edit so you can see mine. So again, my accelerate and brake are mapped to my Husing Belt pedals. My steer left and steer right. Gear down, gear up. Look left, look right. MFD menu. So now my menu controls, I have my navigate buttons, which is my left. 
I have my menu up down button, which is my right. Again, right stick, up, down, left, right. I didn't use any of these, home, in, delete, and page down. I don't even know what purpose they have because um, I have not used them. So the only one that maybe you want to set up, again, some of these MFD shortcuts that are set up there. Again, I don't use the UDP at all. So I can't recommend whether you should use them or not. Again, for me, they serve no purpose. But as you can see here, I have mapped all of my keys to those areas that I think are relevant. And again, nothing mapped for it. Handbrake, because I don't use handbrakes. Now, the next step you want to do is make sure you set up your force feedback. Make sure you turn it on. By default, all this will say zero because it's not actually recognizing that you have a wheelbase connected to a computer. It's think you're mapping all those keys to a keyboard. So again, you're gonna make sure, go in and make settings and changes to the force feedback. I have yet to really dial this in, but I've dialed it in somewhat. So I've got my vibration and force feedback strength at 70. When you get up into the 80s and 90s, the strength on the wheel and to turn it, I don't need that much strength, but I need enough that I feel and get that pushback and resistance. On track effects, rumble strip effects, and off track effects, I mean, let's be honest, it's not going to be a set of Corsa, but you'll need to dial these in to some settings that you feel are representative of the track and make sure that you get the feedback you need to run consistent laps on a regular basis. I will be honest, the rumble strip effects, I think I can make a little bit stronger. On track effects as well. Off track, I'll be honest, it felt quite good at 26, but again, I think I can dial that in this more. Uh, I did not use any of the wheel damper. Um, personally, I didn't see a use for it. Um, so understeer enhance, didn't use this at all, but I did change both of these to 360 degree. The F1 and F2 cars are already set at 360. The maximum rotation for supercars I set at 360 just because if I do race one, I'll be using the same steering wheel. I'll be honest, the supercar feature doesn't entice me at all to want to do just because I bought F1 2022 to race F1 cars. So again, it doesn't really do anything for me. So make sure you get that set up again. If you need to calibrate your steering, if there's a dead zone, if there's a throttle dead zone or things of that nature that you want to map in the game, that you can do. Because I use the Husingfeld sprint pedals, I do it in their software, so I don't need to map it in the game. But if you're using pedals that don't give you that option, you can map it here, which I think is a great feature. So for instance, you want to map some sort of brake dead zone when you first step on it, maybe you want you know, a few degrees that it changes, there's no brake being applied. Maybe you keep your foot rested on the brake. So that's why you want to put a little bit of dead zone. Same with throttle. And again, I don't have any dead zone in my throttle. I've mapped my curve uh, for F1 cars because as you know, stepping on that gas can be quite crazy uh, when you hit that throttle and if you give it too much, it's gonna spin. And I'll be honest, using an F122 cars, it seems like it's far more sensitive even than that of iRacing, which I race in almost daily. So I will say when setting it up, make sure you go through those options and those settings. So I'm going to leave here. And then once you're done, again, it, you'll name it. So you name it, whatever you want. I named mine Moza R9 and GS just because that's the wheel and that's the base that I have right now. Um, at some point, I will obviously want to update, and I think I'll want to update to the R21. Um, every review I've seen of the R21 is amazing. I love the GS wheel, but it also looks like they're coming out with the wheel with the screen right here. So I think that is going to be awesome. I can't wait to see what that's going to look like and also how much that's going to cost. But I know it's going to be absolutely sweet based on this wheel here. So um, it, it looks to be epic. I'm can't wait until we get some more grips for these because as I've said in other videos, Alcantara is nice and I wear it with my gloves, but I would like something chunky so that, you know, when I'm squeezing it, like I don't have to wear gloves. Um, so kind of similar to some of the cube controls, uh, F1 Pro wheel, 
um, which has some chunkier, um, even the McLaren wheel has some chunkier rubber grips there. So I would like to see that there. Um, again, I like the Alcantara, but to me, I like something a little bit squishier for my particular comfort. But again, everybody's different and that's completely subjective. So again, once you're in here, if you, this is what you get to, I always suggest hitting F3 so that you can test it and make sure all of your buttons are mapped. And again, we're gonna make sure that everything is mapped. You know, and as I push it, you can see. So we're gonna hit F3 to exit. I'm gonna hit escape. We're gonna go to the main menu. And as we see here, like I said, nope, hit okay, hit okay. So yeah, see look, navigates perfectly fine. I use my left analog stick to move around. Left and right. Again, left and right. Left and right. Up and down. Let's go to a quick time trial. My OK button. F122. Let's pick a car. Pick a track. And now that we are loaded up, and again, back button, my two button to hit session control. Again, car setup if I was going to set up, but I'm not, so we're gonna go back. If I wanna hit and go to track, hit my go to track button, again, hit back. Again, pretty simple, pretty easy to map. Obviously, if you have any questions, please reach out. I uh, hope this helps. And again, for those of you who just got the game, again, like I said, I enjoy it. Moza R9 will once you dial in those settings. And again, your settings may be different and may use it a little bit differently than mine. Um, and as you play it more, you'll dial in what's necessary and what's not. So if you have any questions, oh, looks like that steering wheel is no longer in plain sight, but that's all right. Um, at the end of the day, Hopefully these settings helped you, and if you have any questions, you hit me up. As always, hit that subscribe link. Go ahead and leave a comment, and uh, go ahead and click that thumbs up and share it with your friends. All right, have a good night. Bye.